ready for the bright lights of the UFC? What was that, sorry? Are you ready for the bright lights of the UFC? I, I am excited for, for that next step, 100%. I'm very excited. Have they talked to you about a deal? Um, not as of yet, no. Uh, our management team have spoken with uh, Sean, and uh, there's, we're still waiting on um, going back and forth. So at this moment, we haven't had a contract offer. What's the, what's the hold up? Not sure. I think uh, I think the the division is was built for Chris Cyborg, and I think we're just all waiting uh, to see what's the next step for her, and then I think we'll we'll move forward and progress from there. Are you ready to cross paths with her? Oh, uh, of course. We're uh, we're all going to fight each other eventually. Um, it's just a matter of when and when that will happen. I think uh, I think she would like that fight to happen now, but contractually, I'm contracted to Invicta at the moment. She uh, is with the UFC, and they're not allowing her to go back to Invicta. So at the moment, it's a bit difficult. So unless they come to us, uh, there's not much we can do. But um, we'll be ready for that fight when and if it happens. What brings you out here? What brings you out here? To watch the fights, I've never actually been to Vegas or to a UFC. So um, I came out here to watch fights and um, to meet my new management team at Paradigm. They're all here because uh, Steven is fighting on the card. So um, it was really great to meet them all in person for the first time and, and just kind of network and that kind of stuff and, and build build a plan for what's next. Did you meet with any of the UFC brass while you were here so far? Um, no, I have not. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. I, I leave tomorrow at 10, so it's just a short trip. When did you get here? I got here on Thursday. Okay. So you've so had a couple of days. I've right. had a couple of days. <laughs> you didn't go to Brooklyn? I didn't, know. Um, oh, of course, I, I would have loved to have been there. Um, you know, the very first featherweight fight in the UFC, that's a, that's, that was a huge moment in history for not only the featherweight division, but for women in the UFC, you know, it's, it's the introduction of a new weight division. I, I feel like there should be more weight divisions for women. Um, weight cuts are a lot harder for us than they are for guys and, and uh, you know, our bodies are completely different. So I feel like introducing new weight divisions is a very smart move and, and it's only going to progress from there and I'm excited for what women's MMA will look like in a year, let alone you know, in six months. Are you a little confused as to the direction of the division because there's no one who has been signed and even Cindy Dandwa has been signed as a bantamweight and she was a featherweight before she fought you. Yep. It, it does seem a little curious the way it's going so far. Do you share that sentiment? Um, yeah, but I, I understand it. Um, you know, Dana has said that this division was built for Chris and I think they're figuring out everything you know, she's just been cleared by USADA, they're taking the next step and I'm sure that they're, they're talking with her and figuring things out, what's the next step for her and, and the division in the UFC. I think it's, I think it would be smart to maybe start building division and so when she, that is cleared, there are people there that um, she can come back to and there's it's kind of a division kind of formed but um, you never know with the UFC, they do things differently so it's, it's all up in the air. How do, you, how do you think you match up with Jermaine? Jermaine, I, I like that match. That's an exciting matchup. I think uh, we're both strikers, which is very exciting. Um, I'm like, I think that would be a very exciting fight for the fans, and I have no doubt that my hand would be raised. So. Do you think she would be Holly? Who would you have in that fight? <sighs> I had Holly pushing the pace, but Jermaine landed the more devastating strikes. Um, I do feel that a point should have been taken at the end of the second time that blows were hit below uh, after the bell but uh, they do say in the rules meeting that it's not that the bell doesn't define the end of the fight it's the referee coming in and stopping it so and that's why the referee's there he's there uh, to stop the fight and you are always there to protect your own self and you don't have to worry about the other fighter so if Holly stopped when the bell stopped she should have waited and kept defending until the referee came in and stopped it if, if your contract talks don't progress would you take another fight in Invicta while you wait oh yeah definitely I want to stay active um, I don't want to you know I've I've been the one fight per year and it's I'm a fighter that likes continual um, competition and I'd like to have a goal to work towards so um, I definitely would if if it's you know the UFC is taking a little longer than we like I would definitely like to fight an Invicta for Shannon and uh, you know defend my belt so that's something that we're also looking at depending on what happens. Do you 
have your next spike booked yet? No, we haven't at this stage. Um, we're in talks with Shannon about what she's thinking, and we'll go from there. Speaking of curious moves, is it weird that you're still the interim champion when it's clear Chris <laughs> isn't going back? Why not just make you the full champion, the full-time champion? I, I do think it's a, a little, uh, it's a very weird um, situation. I think we all know, and Dana has stated that despite, I think I read somewhere that he said, um, no matter how long Jermaine needs off, uh, Chris will no longer be fighting in Evicta. She's fighting in the UFC, end of story. So I think it's a little, it's a little weird. Like I do think that Invicta needs to have some clarification on what is exactly going on with the interim belt, full belt. Um, because if Chris isn't coming back, then she's no longer in the in, she's no longer in the organization. And okay, so if they let's say Chris fights Jermaine next, yeah. would a fight against Holly Holm is the other only other 145 yeah. I guess in the UFC? Do you feel like you're ready for someone like her? Oh, resume? yeah, I I would love to to step up in competition and fight someone like Holly. Uh, she is a world class boxer and um, she's been fighting for a very long time um, and I'd love I'd love to give all the all the fans who think that I'm not at that level yet um, I'd like to like to show them what I've got and, and that I'm you know I'm world class with with my my striking my my wrestling and my ground game I'm getting better every day I'm getting better every week that I'm training and I'm getting better every fight that's that's adamant since I came here so I'm only getting better and I feel like time is on my side Dana seems to appreciate when fighters kind of push the envelope a little bit and, and, and go for it. I mean, he's going to be here. He is here somewhere. Do <laughs> you have any, you know, any plan to maybe at least introduce yourself to him and tell him what you want? Or you have a chance to talk to him? To <laughs> um, that would, I'd, I'd probably ask for a photo first because, <laughs> you know, who, who doesn't with, you know, people they look up to and who have done, you know, great things for the sport. Um, it's the same with fighters that I see. I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I'd love the opportunity to talk to Dana and, and just introduce myself. Um, if it happens, it happens. You know, it, our paths will cross when they're meant to cross, and I think we'll do great things together. Forgive me if I missed this, but how did you feel when Cyborg called you out on Twitter following the initial inaugural featherweight championship fight? Um, I thought it, I was very flattering. She sees me as her top competition. I think uh, the fact that she's not looking at Jermaine uh, means that I feel like she doesn't really respect Jermaine as a champion, um, which is understandable. I get where she's coming from, but uh, I think I thought it was very flattering that she sees me so highly. And you know, I she's been, you know, she f was fighting Marlos Conan when I was still in high school. You know, <laughs> I I only got into the sport when I was 23, and I haven't even been doing this sport for four years. So to come as far as I have in such a short amount of time, I feel like really speaks to my determination, my hard work, and you know, I've. I have a lot more to, to give to the sport, and I'm ready for that next step. You said you, you get where uh, Cyborg is coming from with Jermaine. Can you elaborate a little bit? Well, they brought two 135ers to, to, to fight in the first 145 vision when, you know, we all know that Chris Cyborg is the face of the 145 division right now. Um, but, so I completely understand that, but there's girls like myself that we're coming up the ranks and we're putting our time in, we're getting better each fight and, and I hope to take that place one day. Would you prefer to fight for a title or fight Cyborg? What was that, sorry? Would you prefer to fight for a title or fight for Cyborg? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Like, uh, I feel like if I fought Cyborg, it, essentially I feel like if that fight were to happen, I'm fighting the best woman in the world, so I'm fighting what I consider the champion. You know, I do know that, I, and I full respect to Jermaine, but Chris Cyborg hasn't been beaten in over 10 years. You know, Jermaine has, and she's been unbeaten at her 145 division. So, you know, I would welcome that fight when it happens, and we will be ready. There are technically four featherweight champions right now. You, Cyborg, yes. <laughs> uh, there's Julia Budd. Yep. Jermaine. Jermaine. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> How would you rank those? Oh. Um, I would put, oh God, 
I feel like I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. Um, Did you see the Julia Bird fight last night? I didn't see the fight. I seen the finish. I actually, like, I... I'm sad that Marla is actually retired. She is such a pioneer in the sport, but um, I think it was her time, and I think she knew that. And all respects to her, she is a tough, tough lady. Um, and I can't thank her enough for what she's done for women in this sport. Um, but in terms of ranking them, I would definitely put Chris first. And... How do you yourself? She's, I've been doing this for not even four years. <laughs> she's been undefeated for 10. I know that one day we'll fight, and. I'm, I will take her place, but I'm realistic, I'm honest. Like, I'm not going to lie and say, no, I am the best in the world when I know that I have so much more potential and I've got so much more to learn and grow and experience-wise. But I think I definitely think that she's number one. And second, third, and fourth, I would like to fight all three, or all two, the rest, Julia and um, Jermaine, and we'll fight it out for second place. I, I would love any of those fights. Do you like Vegas? It's interesting. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, um, I'm not a big fan of like big crowds. So like walking down on the strip is just like everyone's everywhere, like going in different digre different directions and all over the place. And it's weird. Like the temperature, it gets like really cold and really hot. And you, you have to, it's kind of like Missouri. You have like four different seasons in one day it's it's very weird I just had one more question the UFC sure. is making its debut in Kansas City in April would that be the perfect scenario for you to try to fight on that card kind of Invicta's you know home base yeah. as well I would I would love the opportunity um, if if that's what they wanted um, I want to fight as often as I can and, and I don't want to wait for um, anyone to be all up in the air or they're injured or you know I want to fight now and if, if they can find me someone and they want me on that card I would welcome the opportunity. So you want to be on that card? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't you know who doesn't want to fight in front of their home town? I would I would actually love to fight in Brisbane or Melbourne you know back in Australia I haven't fought there in over two years and I haven't been home in over a year and a half so I would love the opportunity to fight in front of my home in front of my family my friends you know that's that's the fights that I, I want to go back to Brisbane or, or Melbourne and fight there, you know. It's, for Australians, it's, it's fighting at the top level of the sport in your home country is, it's like, it's like a, something you dream towards. So to be able to have that, have even, even if, you know, I could debut in, in Brisbane or in, or in Melbourne, that would be like, that would be phenomenal. I would welcome that opportunity and I would put on an amazing fight for the fans. Kansas City, your hometown now, though? Yes. <laughs> so I, I move, I'm, I'm officially now in Kansas City, but uh, Australia will always be my home. <laughs>